All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for coming to our virtual happy hour series. My name is Amanda. I'm one of the event managers for the Highlands Ranch Community Association. Um, of course, I want to thank you. Um, big thank you to Davidson's for being such a great supporter of our events and a, uh, for their continued support as we have moved to our virtual series this year. Um, remember, uh, you were emailed a coupon for 10% off that you can use um, in, uh, after the event. So if you like tonight's cocktails, be sure you to be sure to head back over to Davidson's uh, and use that coupon for an extra 10% off. Of course, thank you to Michael and Decadent Saint for being with us tonight and putting together some great cocktails. Very excited to try these. Um, just a reminder, just stay muted throughout the uh, event tonight so we don't have a lot of background noise as you're stirring and mixing your cocktails. It makes it very hard to hear. So um, if you have questions, ask them in the chat and Michael do your be his best to answer them. I will help as well. Um, there might be an opportunity where we ask you to unmute yourself at that point to um, speak face to face. Um, which reminds me, turn on your cameras. It's a lot easier for all of us to speak to um, your faces rather than uh, just blank black screen. So turn on your cameras. This is hands-on, so make sure you're, you're participating that way. Um, and that's all the housekeeping I've got. I recommend changing to speaker view for the best view of Michael as he hosts this. So you can get, uh, he'll be the big screen. If you have uh, any other questions, you can throw them up in the chat. And Michael, go ahead and get started. Okay. Hi, guys. How's it going out there? Welcome to Decadent Saint. It's really fantastic. And thank you, Amanda, and um, you guys for getting us set up with this. We're really excited to, to show you Decadent Saint and, and what it's all about. And for, for, for many of you out there, uh, I imagine you may not have tried Decadent Saint before, but you probably have had a sneak preview after buying the bottles, I'm sure. So, um, so I'd like to uh, take you through what, decadent, what is possible with Decadent Saint. Um, I'm going to go around the other side of the, uh, the table here. So, so I'm going to be taking you through tonight a range of cocktails. And um, but before we get started, uh, just to introduce myself, I'm uh, Michael Hassler. I'm the owner, uh, co-owner of Decadent Saint, together with my wife, Carolee. Uh, we started the business in 2013. We started out by making wine. So I made a bunch of varietal wines, uh, just standard varietal wines, Cabernets, Merlots, Shiraz, uh, Sauvignon Blanc, M Muscat Blanc, uh, different varieties. And that was in 2013. However, during that vintage, straight after vintage, I went straight into developing my first Decadent Saint. So my first uh, ultimate mixer, what, what you have in your hands right now. And so these are 20% alcohol, all natural concentrates or mixes. They're, they're wine-based liqueurs or mixes. Now they're 20% alcohol, they're all natural, and um, they're only made with real fruit. No artificial flavorings, no natural flavorings, no colorings. They're not filtered, nor are they pasteurized. So uh, that means that you get all the real flavor of the fruit pass through for you in the bottle. So it's, it's like a, a fruit preservation system in a bottle. Now, nobody else is doing this in the United States as far as we know. We're the only company who have a product like this out there. We really do feel like we're in blue water here. We have created a new innovative product to the marketplace, which nobody else is doing. Um, so now um, they're concentrates and so as a concentrate, they make a lot of cocktails and there's many, many cocktails they will make. And so um, as a concentrate, you can make a whole range of different cocktails. If you look on your cocktail list, I'll bring this forward now. You, you should ha have, this, have this from your, your screen, but I'll, I'll bring it up close to the screen like so you can see this here. Um, you'll see here that we have four flavors, uh, passion fruit, raspberry, spiced black currant, and spiced dark chocolate. Now, I've only asked you guys to get a bottle of the passion fruit or raspberry or black currant tonight so we can try making cocktails. Um, so hopefully you've got yourself a couple of bottles. Um, now, on this page here, you'll see that any one of these three flavors, the passion fruit, the raspberry, or the black currant, make any one of these cocktails. So you can make a passion fruit version of these, a raspberry version of these, or a spiced black currant version of any one of these cocktails. So in other words, you can make a passion fruit margarita, a raspberry margarita, a spice black currant margarita, the same with a gin and tonic, the same with a Moscow mule. So that's how versatile they are. And that's just the beginning. There are many, many other cocktails you can make. This is just a specific 
um, uh, index list, which you can use uh, as a cheat as a cheat list to use any of these flavors to make uh, those cocktails with. Okay, so now and the last flavor, the spice dark chocolate, which we're not tasting tonight. It's uh, it's the most intense dark chocolate on the U.S. market. It's so intense, it's like a chocolate bitters. Um, and so you can make a chocolate martini out of that. Uh, it makes an amazing white Russian or a mudslide. Really, compared to Kahlua, which you, you usually use to make a, a white Russian or a mudslide, it's twice the intensity of Kahlua. makes a much more intensely flavored white Russian or, or black Russian or uh, mudslide. It's the big Lebowski, guys. The dude abides with this one, really. So if you get to try this one, it's really an amazing um, liqueur. But we're going back to these here. These are the three ones I've indicated tonight for the... Uh, for the tasting. So passion fruit, raspberry, spice, black currant. The other beautiful thing about these flavors is that once they're open, they stay fresh for six months without refrigeration. So you open the bottle, the rest of the bottle stays fresh until you finish the bottle. So I guarantee that. The reason why that is, is because they're 20% uh, they're alcohol. That's one reason that prevents bacterial or yeast spoilage. They're, um, they've got the highest level of vitamin C of any beverage in the US market. Um, and they're thick. The thickness of them means there's no uh, convection currents in the product to distribute air from the top of the bottle into the rest of the bottle to cause oxidation. So guys, if you have any questions, please ask me in the chat or otherwise, okay? So that's the, the guff on, on the products. So we really feel we've created something totally unique in the US market and now you're about to taste it, okay? All right, so here we go. So folks, um, we're gonna start. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please ask me. Um, oh, just one more thing, we started in 2013, it's now 2020. We've developed this range of ultimate mixes over this time. And so we now have those four flavors since uh, 2013. Um, so you're gonna be trying uh, whichever flavors you purchase, but I, you all should have the passion fruit and you should all have one or other of the raspberry or the black currant. So I want you to start with just the simplest recipe, the very simplest recipe. Now that is just adding water to these products. So it's uh, super complicated. So if you've got your mixing cup or your, or your, uh, or your shaker, just um, take some of the passion fruit. I'll show you how to do this. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna be doing guys, and this is, a, this is a, a, also a, um, a, 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 an indic a, um, index for the whole evening. I'm going to be, be making a lot of cocktails. Now, I'm not, I'm not in intentionally wanting to get anyone drunk tonight. So I'm going to be making a lot of cocktails. I don't expect you to drink each cocktail as I make it. What I want you to do is make the cocktail, put it aside, or just dump it into a large container. Like I've got a, I've got a jug here like this. I'm going to jump each cocktail I make into this jug and you'll see at the end of the night, we'll turn what, what we've made out of all of our cocktails into a, into a big sangria mix. So there'll be no wastage from any of the cocktails you make. So your choice is, the choice one, take a few little sips so you can get to try each cocktail, which I would recommend, or drink each cocktail and get slammed. Okay, so that's your choice. But I'd love you to throw, if you want to not get slammed, throw your products into here. So you can save uh, and make save your uh, drinks and make a sangria for the end of the night. Okay, first cocktail, passion fruit ultimate mixer. You'll see on the label it says passion fruit ultimate mixer. On the other side it says sangria. It's a two-faced label. Okay, so I'll, so it's a sangria. It's the simplest recipe by just adding water. It's an ultimate mixer because it makes so many cocktails. Okay. So I'm gonna use my jigger. It's a three quarter ounce and a one and a half ounce uh, jigger. So I'm putting in one ounce of the passion fruit. And then I'm gonna be putting in three ounces of water. And I'd like you to do the same. Now when I use my jigger, because they get a mess otherwise, I try and use the same side and not turn it over so I don't get some sticky mess and turn it upside down. So that's it. That's your sangria made. Now you don't have to be as exact as that. 
I'm not exact at all when I make it. I throw in so much into a glass at approximately this much water and you add more or less water according to your taste. And that's your sangria made. You throw ice, ice on top, and that's your sangria made. So like that, there it is. So um, uh, Amanda, what do we do? Do we ask people if they like it or what do we do next with this, with each cocktail we're doing? Up to you, everyone. If you've got it made, go ahead and give it a taste and give it a thumbs yeah, up. So and do we ask people to, vote, to say they like it or what do we do? Okay. So if you want to, if you want to make that cocktail, we'll take a moment. All you do, one part of the passion fruit, three parts water with, with ice and have a sip of that. You can add some lime to that, of course. Now, if you're, if you're using this for yourself at home, I've made up some, uh, some mixed fruit here to make it look more exotic. You do this. Throw in some spoonfuls of mixed fruit. Mix it up. And you make a, a cocktail like this. Okay? So that's how the sangria would be served. Make it look colourful, beautiful like that. And that's the simple sangria. Now that cocktail is about 5% alcohol. So one part of our passion fruit, three parts water, equals about 5% alcohol. And as I said, you can make it sweeter or less sweet according to your taste. Okay. And I'm already half slammed because I've been trying these cocktails all afternoon. So I'm ready to roll with everybody. Okay. Okay. How do I know when everyone's tried that cocktail? Amanda. How do I do that? If everyone wants to put in the chat if they like their cocktail and their yeah, thoughts or unmute yourself. We've got a small group tonight, so feel free to unmute yourself and ask questions or yes. comment on the taste. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a novice at this, guys, so I'm just, I'll follow Amanda's cue. So, yeah, if you would like to unmute and ask any questions or write in the chat what you like. I'm going to look at the chat. Okay. All right, Mindy, you jumped ahead with the Grand Sangria. Fantastic. Okay. All right, it's very tasty. All right, so look, you see how simple that is. So you've got a product which makes a delicious sangria. We pers I personally feel I've tried all the sangrias in a bottle in America, everything I can get my hand on. I feel very confident I, can find, I cannot find anything else which matches this flavor. And, and, I know, and I know technically why they can't match it, because they can't put real fruit unfiltered or unpasteurized into a bottle to make their sangria. They have to pasteurize it, in, in other words, heat it, or they have to filter it to make it to, so that it will last at a, as a, as a uh, below, as a 10% alcohol or 8% alcohol product. I don't have to do that as a 20% alcohol product. That's why you get such an amazing flavor. So anyway, that's the sangria. That's the passion fruit. So that's very simple. Okay, so now um, you can do the same thing with the raspberry, same thing with the black currant. Can I, can I ask people to, to, um, to on the chat, to, to write in what bottles they've got, whether they've got passion fruit or, or raspberry or black currant. If you could just put in passion P, R or B, C in the chat. So I know which cocktails to make, which, which flavors to use to make the cocktails for the next one. P passion P for passion fruit, R for raspberry. You have all three, well done James. Thank you. <laughs> no one has no one falls. No one falls on that's too much. No, that's fine. You can take one out. Okay. Real three, two, passion, awesome. Okay, passion. Okay. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna make a few different cocktails. Uh, if you don't, if you only have the passion fruit, don't worry. You can just make all the cocktails I'm about to make just with the passion fruit. 
Um, but for the other, the other of you there, I'm going to mix, mix and match some of these cocktails so you can try the raspberry and the passion fruit as different flavors. Again, don't throw out this cocktail uh, and don't drink it unless you want to get slammed. Because like, you know, by the end of the night, you will be slammed. So put that aside and we'll use that to make our, our sangria mix um, so, we can, so we don't waste anything. All right, so now I could show the next one, the raspberry and Rocky Mountain Rescue. Okay, so Jamie, you bought the Rocky Mountain Rescue. We're not actually showing the chocolate tonight. So uh, that is the Rocky Mountain Rescue. So we, uh, we won't be doing that one. So, um, so the next one will be the raspberry. Okay, so I'm gonna do this one though with uh, salsa. So grab yourself a can of salsa. Okay. And, um, and grab the raspberry. And what I want you to do is say, do the exact same mix, which we just did. And I want two glasses. I want you to grab two glasses. I'm gonna make two different mix, mixes. Actually, sorry, I'm gonna do this with this spice black currant because you've got the black currant. So we're gonna do two different mixes. So take the black currant, we're gonna make one at, at, at the normal strength and one at half the strength. So if you just watch me, I'm gonna put in spice black currant, one shot, and I'm putting in one, two, three shots of, of um, seltzer, putting in some Bring in some ice, and then I'm gonna pour that out. That's one drink. Then the next drink, just, yeah. The next drink, I'm putting in one shot of black currant, and we're gonna add twice as much of black currant. So we're, this time, instead of adding three shots of black currant, that the first one was a one to three. This one will be a one to five, actually. So um, so we 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 double. Uh, double the uh, so make it half the intensity. So that was one shot of black currant. Now one, two, three, four, five. Actually, put one more in the last to make it six. So six shots of seltzer. So it's half the strength of the first one. Put in some ice, and now. Now you've got two, two, two different drinks. Okay, obviously the second one is gonna be weaker than the first one, okay? What I want you to do then, does anyone have any vodka there? I'm sorry, I'm throwing in the vodka quickly. Vodka, um, if you have some vodka, you don't have to do this, but if you have some vodka there, grab, put a shot of vodka into the dilute one. Okay, and I'm gonna be revealing to you what this is in a moment. Okay, awesome, Jamie. Yeah, so, so guys, when you're ready, tell me you're ready and you, uh, you can do a thumbs up or let me know that you're ready, you've made the two drinks. So we're doing the black currant, one shot, one shot of black currant, three shots of seltzer, one shot of black currant, six shots of shell, seltzer with a shot of with a shot of vodka. How are we going? So now take a taste. Try the weak one first. And now if you only had the passion fruit, you'd be doing it with the passion fruit, of course, not the black currant. I'll give you a moment. So what I've done here is I've done basically this. You guys know the craze for these things here. We'll go up here. Michael, we have a question if uh, tequila would work instead of vodka. Someone's got tequila on hand. Tequila would work for sure. So guys, you see that white claw thing? Like white claw there? Okay, that's what I've, what I've made with the second drink. 
Yeah, tequila would work, put a shot of tequila in. Whiskey would work as well. All of those spirits meld well with these flavors. Whiskey would move the black currant more into a, an old fashioned sort of Manhattan type flavor. Yeah, so tequila is an interesting flavor with the, with the black currant. It's fantastic with the, naturally fantastic with the passion fruit, but with the black currant, it's a, it's a very unique flavor with the black currant. So now when you try that, what we've done here is with the second one where I've made it more dilute, we've basically made a hard seltzer. And so we, this is the decadent Saint hard seltzer. And so you've got, normally you can buy light core or something like that. Now these are 5% alcohol and 100 calories. The second one, which you've just tried there, is 4.5% alcohol and it's uh, 119 calories. So it's just 20 calories more than uh, a, a white core or a, um, any hard seltzer. But I would, I would ask you what, yeah, what do you think of that flavor? So just write your comments. Do you, do you, would you prefer drinking this to a, to a, uh, to any, to a hard seltzer? That, that, that's the question. And then of course, try the other one. You have a sparkling sangria with the, the normal, uh, the normal recipe is the one to three seltzer. It's a sparkling sangria. Thank you, Jamie. I made white claw. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, Jamie. Yep. Yeah. To me, the thing about white claw and all of the, all of the, um, all of the hard seltzers you buy, they're made with flavorings. Now, to me, it's a bit of a marketing thing these days is that everyone's scared of calories. And I think you, you've just got to be sensible about the calories you use. With our product, obviously they're sweet. They're made with real fruit sugar, um, no artificial flavorings or, or anything in them. Um, so, so what you're getting with our product, you're getting sl slight, a slight raise in calories, but you're getting a real fruit flavor, something which actually tastes good compared to, in my opinion, you've got a white claw, which is only purely made with flavorings. So you've got a flavored uh, seltzer water, basically. And so that's a choice that makes something, add, a, add an extra, you know, 20%, 15% uh, calories and you've got a delicious uh, hard seltzer made with decadent same. Now all three flavors work that way. The passion fruit, the raspberry, or the black currant, they work beautifully that way as a hard seltzer. Okay, so, and it's cheaper. It's cheaper than buying hard seltzer. You're putting, if you're gonna use a whole can, if you were to make one whole can of uh, decadent saint, um, this is how you'd make it. Um, this, is, this would be your hard seltzer. So I'll make you a, a full, a full glass, so you know how that's made. So you take your jigger. So I'm going to make a passion fruit one. This one. This is the passion fruit hard seltzer. I'm putting in one and a half ounces of passion fruit. I'm putting in um, uh, an ounce. Oh, sorry, uh, three quarters of an ounce of vodka. That's half, half of this sugar top. And then all I'm doing is adding seltzer to the top. And so normally when I'm making it like this, you would stir it halfway so you, so you get the syrup mixed in. So halfway, and then you keep topping it with seltzer. Another stir. So that's your passion fruit hard seltzer. Just super refreshing drink. So easy to make. Like I said, 120 calories for this size drink. You've got 10 ounces of seltzer, one and a half ounce of decadent saint, three quarters of an ounce of vodka, and that's uh, 120 calories, 119 calories. Cheers, everyone. So it's fit. I love the passion fruit like that. Okay, that's going into my sangria mix. Okay. You want to make sure your sangria mixes for you or, or for people you normally uh, uh, 
are very close to, of course, because I'm trying every drink. If it's going into one picture in these times, how, who are you going to share it with? So it might be just for yourself. Okay. All right. So now we've tried the, um, the, the black currant, or you can try any of these flavors with seltzer. We've tried it as a hard seltzer as well. I'm going to pour this into my jug. All right. So now, um, the sugar, great. So now, um, another great way of using our, our, um, our uh, decadent saints is to make a high. So, um, who was it? Um, someone, three. Um, so, Mindy, you made the Grand Sangria. Okay, delicious. So, Mindy went straight ahead and made the Grand Sangria originally. And so she made that with a passion fruit to make a grand sangria, super simple. I'm going to use the raspberry this time. You put in the raspberry, you put in one shot of raspberry. So I'm putting one and a half shots. You put in, now I usually use white wine for the, for the passion fruit and red wines for the raspberry or the black currant. So this is a high proof sangria. What I like to say when you try this, it makes a more elegant, more complex Spanish style sangria. Normally you just add water to these and it's just a simple fruity sangria. You know, it's delicious, but it's just simple and fruity. If you want to make a, a gutsy, rich um, sangria, which, which, uh, uses, uh, which has got higher proof, you add wine instead of just water or seltzer. And so I've now added one jiggerful of, of the raspberry in here. I'm going to add two jiggerfuls of, of the uh, red wine. One, and what I like to say, even if your wine is oxidized or you don't particularly like it, you know, someone gives you a crappy bottle of wine, I like to call these a wine recovery program. Because even if your wine is pretty bad, you can use these to make a good, to very good sangria out of it. So that's what I've got here. This wine, I opened it a few days ago and it wasn't great. So I'm making a sangria out of it. So now I've added one part of raspberry, two parts of red, of red wine, and I'm gonna add one shot of water to it. You wouldn't have to add the water, but uh, you, can make, you can make it even higher food. And then you just put it on the rocks. That's it. And that's your sangria made. I mean, guys, have you ever made a sangria so simply at home? You just add wine, add a bit of water. And that's your sangria man. And have a taste of that. Now that's with the wine added. It's now about 12% alcohol. The first one we added just with water, it's about 5% alcohol. That's 12%. That's the raspberry sangria. Again, throw in your fruits. Throw in your fruits and then chop up the ice. And then you've got this sangria to enjoy and to serve. So, yeah. So that's the raspberry sangria, grand sangria made with, with red wine. Okay. Can you let me know what you think of the sangria with red wine when you're ready, when you've done that? No rush. Just any comments. And again, just put it to one side and we'll make a jug of this. And I guarantee what we make in a jug will last you at least a week or two in the fridge. So it's gonna be no wastage from tonight's cocktails. Exactly. Thanks, Jamie. Very nice. Nice way to use the wine you hate to throw away. Exactly. I think I'm a winemaker. Actually, that's my profession, guys. I studied wine science when I was uh, when I was 18 years old in Australia. So I got my wine science degree when I was 20, 22 years old in Australia. So I've got a Bachelor of Applied Science in Wine Science. I spent my whole life making wine, classical wine, uh, out of you know grapes. And, but I've also got a very keen uh, feeling and, and enjoyment for invention. And so making these ultimate mixes was 
was a lot of fun doing something totally unique. Um, yeah, is there a best type of red wine? Um, pretty much any red wine will do. You know, you can use anything. I mean, if the red wine's really awful, you know, you may have to, you know, use it for cooking or something, but mostly the, 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 red, the sangria, the, the mix will cover up any faults in the wine. Um, and um, you can make, you can add a little bit more of our mix to make it a bit stronger, uh, a bit more sweeter if you want, so you get the richness in there. So when you, when you, a wine typically going off, which we call off, is it goes oxidized. And so what my products do is that they recover the oxidation. So instead of a, a wine which tastes like off and flat and, um, and not enjoyable, it hasn't got fresh fruit flavors, you're adding, if you add the, the passion fruit, the raspberry, the black carrot to that, you end up reducing it and bringing back the fruit flavor. And so it makes it lively again. And so you're pretty much just then using the alcohol as a base to support my products. And so it recovers the wine. Okay, so that's the, um, that's the uh, we've now tried the sangria just with water. We've tried the sparkling sangria by adding seltzer and we've tried the grand sangria. Now that's the first three recipe on your cocktail list, which you should have, which you were able to download. There's three recipes just here. The simplest recipes. So now we're going to move on to the, um, we're going to jump to uh, the Moscow Mule. Okay, so if you look over here, if you've got your cocktail list, you'll see it's down here right below Grand Sangria Mule. Okay, so I hope you've got some uh, ginger beer at home. If you've got some ginger beer at home, um, we're going to make this meal now. So, so it's, again, what I love about Decadence saying what we've created here is these cocktails are just so easy. There's no, it's really simple to make. So to make your Moscow Mule, you're going to need lime. You're going to need, um, we're going to use the black currant again this time to make the black currant mule. And we're going to use ginger beer. Now by, I mean, there's so many ginger beers on the market right now, but really my favorite, one of my favorites is Gosling's. I think it, I, to my taste, has a really good ginger character. There are a lot of ginger beers out there. And also the Gosling's, if, you don't, if you're concerned about calories, the, the, um, the uh, low calorie version of this is actually excellent compared to any low calorie version which I've found on the market. So really good ginger beer is the Gosling's. I know it's, everyone uses Gosling, but that, there's a reason for that. If you go to the top bars, they use Gosling's. Okay, so now, usually when I make a cocktail, I'll start with a bit of ice. Again, I'm, I'm only gonna be making small amounts of this so that because we've got a lot of cocktails to make, I'm gonna use the uh, three quarter ounce sugar. So one shot of black currant, and then one, two, three, four shots of Gosling's. Then, it's really up to you, this is very scientific, but you add a dash of lime. A dash is a dash. I can't tell you how much a dash is, but if you really love lime, you might dash a bit more than somebody else. So, so that is the black currant mule. And this is the simplest version. That comes in at about four and a half percent alcohol. Okay, four to four and a half percent alcohol. That would be a very um, low alcohol, uh, sessionable drink like this. Um, let me know when you guys have tried that. So just one part. Now, again, if you've got the passion fruit, just put one part passion fruit. Or if you've got the raspberry, one part raspberry to four parts ginger beer. Uh, so can you add additional alcohol? I'm, a, I'm just about to add some more. I'm jumping, jumping the gun there. Okay, so I want people to try this first and then we are going to add. So it's really, try this first and then we're going to try adding some vodka to it or some whiskey. So, vodka or whiskey to that. I mean, if you're really a tequila lover, you can use tequila, but uh, particularly with the black currant, 
it's vodka or whiskey, which I like. So let me know. Can can you give a do you want to give a thumbs up on the chat whether you like or thumbs down or neutral whether you like the um, the Moscow Mule? Cheers, everyone. Double thumbs up. Thank you, Sarah. It's good for a person that doesn't like ginger beer. That's great, Jamie. The thing about the black currant, which you just tried, is the black currant, it's made with black currants. Now, black currants is a berry which isn't known well in America. In fact, I just got a bag of black currants in from a supplier. I can show you what they look like. Just wait, wait a second. This is in my winery fridge. Now this is what I'm getting a sample of these because I'm looking at using these, these frozen fresh black currants. These come from New York to make my um, to make the next batch of my of my uh, black currant. Milk. So if we look here, they, they look like blueberries. I can show you here. They look like this. That's a black currant. It's frozen, of course, but they're a very intensely colored berry which is mostly grown up to up to recently in europe and in australia new zealand uh in in england and in, in the continent they make ribena out of it it's a it's a black currant cordial very high in vitamin c very particular flavor it's normally used to make creme creme de cassis if you know cassis that is what it's used that's what black what cassis is made from is black currant so it's a very particular flavor. Now the black currant I use, I use real, real black currants. It's a concentrate uh, from New York and from Czechoslovakia. That's where I get my black currants from. And it's made with cinnamon, cinnamon and allspice. That's the predominant spice which goes in there to give it its characteristic flavor. Um, so very unique, very unique flavor. I'll put this back in the freezer. Okay, guys, so now uh, you've got this Moscow Mule. Now just try, if you've got vodka or whiskey to this, add whiskey or vodka. I love whiskey with this. I am a whiskey fan. So just should throw a shot of whiskey in there. And that means your Moscow Mule goes from 4% up to about 10% alcohol. Okay, so with a shot of whiskey in there. To me, it's a stunning flavor combination because the black currant, um, rye whiskey, perfect. So James, you added the rye whiskey. Um, if you add rye whiskey directly to the black currant, um, there are so many cocktails we can make with this, but that is my favorite cocktail almost of my whole range, is you add two parts rye whiskey to one part of the black currant. It's a stunning Manhattan. Now I'm a bit of a snob for Manhattans. Where whenever I go out, I usually get a Manhattan, and so you know sometimes an old fashioned. But you know I love trying Manhattans. Um, you know the different whiskies and the different cherries they use and things. But this makes a really delicious Manhattan. So two parts rye whiskey, uh, three quarters to one part of the black currant. Really delicious Manhattan. Okay, so and that's why the the uh, whiskey goes so well with the uh, Moscow Mule as well because it's just a great uh, pairing of flavors. So that's the, um, that's the uh, Moscow Mule. Vodka would have worked well. You know, gin is interesting. You know, gin will work as well. If you really love those herbal characters, gin will work with the black currant. But it is an interesting, it's, it's not my favorite combination for combining cinnamon and warm flavors with gin. But, but some people love it. Also. So uh, I'm, not, I'm not a dictator of flavors here. So some people love that. Okay, that is the, um, the, the Moscow Mule. 
Guys, you can use the same thing with the black currant, with the raspberry, with the passion fruit. They all make a delicious Moscow mule. So instead of just, just making a standard mule, you know, get yourself um, some, some any old ginger beer, try it with our decadent saint. Again, remember, you're making one cocktail with one of these, the rest of the bottle stays fresh for six months without refrigeration. So you're not gonna have any wastage with the bottle which is left in your liquor cabinet. Remember, you don't have to refrigerate these. Okay, so now that's the Moscow Mule. It's going over here into my Sangria collection. Okay. Okay, all right, so now that's um, the third one. All right, so now we're on to champions. Is everybody ready? Okay, looks like we've got a very intimate crowd here tonight. So, so the next one I'm going to do is champagne. So um, I suggest that you guys buy yourself a mini bottle so you're not going to crack a whole bottle of champagne or waste a, a bottle. So if you've got that mini bottle, that's great. But otherwise, if you have comments or questions, feel free to ask when you ask. Yeah, if anybody has any questions up to now, please ask. Okay. Right, so next one. Champagne. Okay. Champagne. So when I call this champagne, it's really a $10 bottle of something I bought. Okay. So the French, if you're French, if you're French, don't get worried. I'm not going to bastardize what you make. Okay. This is uh, sparkling wine from America. So the point about this is this, our product again, it's like the wine analogy. You can get almost anything with bubbles in it and add our product to it. It makes it into something amazing. Now you could use French champagne. When I, when I serve this, I like to say it turns Moe Chandon, any champagne into Moe Chandon. Because it doesn't matter whether you use Moe Chandon or any simple sparkling wine, you still make a great champagne cocktail. So this is a $10 bottle of something bubble, okay? Very sophisticated. It's probably what you're gonna get behind the bar at an expensive restaurant. That's how they make your champagne cocktail because they know that they're not gonna waste French champagne or a good sparkling on, uh, on something which is with a, got a syrup in it because the syrup adds, gives the quality. Okay, so now we're going here, champagne flute. Now we could try any of the flavors, take any of the flavors you've got, and I'm gonna get you to pour in. Um, now, many people talk about Chambord, our raspberry, if you've got the raspberry, is the clearest, clearest raspberry in the US market. It's much more concentrated than Chambord, and it's about half the price of Chambord. So it's really good with champagne, but really the passion fruit, the black currant. Actually, my favorite with champagne is the black currant. But let, Try any of the flavors. I'm going to try the, um, the raspberry. So take, I usually don't use a jigger. I usually just go like this, guys. I'm not too concerned about it. You go like this, pour in about an ounce, like that in the bottom of the champagne flute, like that. You can see that, okay? And then I'll bring it up close. So you see here, that's about, that's about an ounce in my champagne flute. Okay, so now if you're gonna make yourself if you're going to make yourself a champagne cocktail, do this. Pour in your champagne and put in about two parts champagne and then give it a stir, like that. Give it a really good stir. So that way the syrup all gets integrated and diluted. Okay, so you've got that going and it's already, it's gone. What a lot of people do, and I've even seen that in restaurants, is they just pour champagne on top of the syrup. And then by the end, the end of the cocktail, when you get your last sip, you get a glug of syrup. And so try this, dilute it first, and then, then you can just go like this, add the champagne, and you've got your, their raspberry champagne cocktail. Voila. Okay. And that could be the passion fruit, that could be the black currant. There you go.
Okay, awesome guys. So now you've got, you've now, um, now again, you've got the black currant, the raspberry, or the uh, passion fruit. Some people like, you could put fruit in there for sure, absolutely. You know, throw, put in a few, um, you know, like I've got, you know, just whatever is a nice contrasting. I've got some blueberries here. I could put in some strawberries. You know, some strawberries in there. Okay, like that. And just something floating around in the top. And again, so you've got a cocktail which looks like this. Like that. You know, which is really, really Moorish. In America, I don't think you know that word. You've got to get in the lexicon. You know, in, 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 in Europe, England, it's Moorish. If it's Moorish, you want more of it. So if it's really Moorish, you want to drink more of it. Moorish. And it's not uh, Othello, if you know Shakespeare. Shakespeare, Othello was the Moor. Who, um, who was the, uh, the black dude in Shakespeare, in uh, Othello. Okay, um, beautiful color. So look, you, you might have tried that with champagne, you might, with uh, the raspberry or the passion fruit or the black currant. Some people do the chocolate with that as well. For me, it's a weird combination. Is there a good combo for rum? <coughs> You know, if you like the flavor of rum, any of the drinks I've done now, which I've added spirit to, you can add rum to. If you like the flavor of rum, it just makes it more into that sort of, um, that Caribbean flavor. Um, rum, it, it's fine. Any spirit will add, because if you think of what a daiquiri is, and I'm not talking about a frozen daiquiri, just a normal daiquiri. A daiquiri is just rum with fruit juices. And so that's pretty much what you're doing here with any of these three flavors. You're putting rum with fruit juices. And so you're making a daiquiri. So if you add seltzer, you add water, uh, ginger beer, even you have a ginger flavored daiquiri, you know. So rum works beautifully with these. We just got, you know, before this pandemic happened, we were about to launch in New Orleans. We sent a pallet of our product down to New Orleans and then the pandemic, literally the pallet arrived in on on march the 20th in new orleans and it was like oh my god shoot myself because then all the bars closed so we, we 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 got into new orleans and then we got shut down and what i'm talking about new orleans is that you know down in um down in new orleans they made a um now my mind's gone blank. it's a, a hurricane the hurricane is probably the most popular drink down there you go to a place called Patty O'Brien's and they make their own horrible hurricane recipe made with the powder. But this, this, I went to so many bars around New Orleans and they tried my hurricane, making their own hurricane with my passion fruit concentrate. They were blown away. We, we were about to kick ass in New Orleans un, until this pandemic happened. And so they, cause they love the hurricane made with our passion fruit. So really fantastic. A hurricane usually to make a hurricane it's one ounce of white rum one ounce of dark rum you'd add an ounce and a half to two ounces of our no two ounces of our passion fruit so one one two half an ounce of lime and then water to taste to make the, the hurricane okay um i don't know you probably could type that in but um i have i think the hurricane recipe no it's not on there I haven't, we haven't got it online either. So just remember, that's it. Perfect. Perfect. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. Perfect. Okay. So that's the hurricane recipe. So does it go well with rum? Yes, it does. The other night when we were, uh, we were making frozen, uh, frozen margaritas, um, I said, well, let's not, we just, we just planted some, um, some mint in the garden. And so instead of making margaritas, I got down some rum in the, in the kit and throw, threw some rum into the blender, some of the passion fruit and mint leaves and, uh, and lime and blend it all up and make some really amazing um, uh, mint, mint juleps, you could call them, or uh, so really beautiful mint flavored cocktail with the passion fruit. Just amazing. So um, 
that's with the blender. That's what a lot of these here. Now, all the drinks I've made so far, instead of, uh, instead of uh, using water, you could cut the water in half or the seltzer in half, put ice into a blender and blend it up to make a slushy out of this. So you make a passion fruit slushy, a raspberry slushy, or a spiced black currant slushy out of any of these. They're really amazing, you know, long, delicious uh, cocktails to make for, uh, for summer. So make, get, get your blender going and use these to make slushies. Really, really fantastic cocktails. Again, guys, you know, it, 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 when I'm talking about all this, it, it, it sort of sounds complicated because I'm throwing in so many cocktails, but it's actually so easy. You're just adding water, you're just adding wine, you're just adding champagne, you're just adding ginger beer, and you're making a cocktail. So that's what these guys allow you to do, and you're, allowed, and you're getting the clear, cleanest possible fruit flavors. So, so now we've tried the sangria, sparkling sangria, um, grand sangria, Moscow mule, and we've made a Bellini. So good. So, so now I'm putting this aside again. As I said, I'm going to make one big sangria at the end and we can put it all into one jug. We can adulterate it, you know, make the final adjustments to it. You put it in the fridge and you drink it over the next week, if not one day. Okay. All right. So now that is the, uh, the first three flavors. Now we're getting to tequila. Tequila. There we go. So this, this is the one I use. It's just a, uh, I usually use a, a um, you know, a, uh, a Reposado tequila. It really doesn't matter if you like using a Plata or something like that, you can use that. I'm not that fussed with this because again, you're getting the, you're getting the tequila flavor, but you're getting most of the flavor from Decadent Saint. That's why I say Decadent Saint, what we do here is really, is a fudge factor because it's got so much flavor and so much quality flavor, you, you really can even use it quite an inexpensive tequila, but it, it really does grace to a high-end tequila as well, or a high-end whiskey. Like when I'm making my, um, when I'm making my Manhattan with the black currant, I usually use, um, uh, 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 what's the whiskey I use? Um, I usually use Breckenridge because I stay local, the Breckenridge whiskey or some other whiskey, a high-end whiskey, which I use to make my, um, my uh, Manhattan. But, it, but, but the product, the black currant does it great because it's good enough. It's, the quality is there to, to do justice to a high-end product. So anyway, so this is a fairly inexpensive bottle of tequila to make your uh, margarita. You take tequila, I'm going to make a passion fruit one this time, passion fruit, tequila, and lime juice. Now you can use fresh lime. So I'm lazy, I buy lime juice. So if you're lazy just like me, you can buy lime juice. And to me, you'd have to be a sommelier to tell the difference between my margarita and one made with fresh lime juice, okay? So I'm not a sommelier, I'm a winemaker. I haven't gone through all those tasting things. I know how to make wine and make booze and make things taste good, but I'm not someone who can tell you all the regions where wine comes from. That's what a familiar does. So I know how to make the stuff, um, not how to judge it so much. Um, so, so there we've got tequila, our jigger. I'm gonna add in um, one and a half shots of, actually, I'm gonna start with the passion fruit. One and a half shots of passion fruit. Sorry. One shot of passion fruit, forgive me. One shot of passion fruit, one and a half shots of tequila. Now the reason I do this is because it cleans the jigger. I put my syrupy product in first because it's sticky and it's syrupy. And then I put the tequila in next to clean the jigger. So one and a half shots of tequila. So one shot of passion fruit, one and a half shots of tequila. And then I'm going to show, throw in about a third of a shot of lime. Now this is really up to you. If you want it more, more, you know, more like that, more uh, sour and more grippy, add more lime. If you don't, it's up to you. So then we add in 
to make a normal uh, margarita, we're going to add in about a shot of one shot of water. We're going to add our ice. Like that. Now this is where I really become a barman. I'm not a barman, guys. I'm a winemaker. So you go like this. So you're throwing in one shot of water. By the time you've shaken it with the ice, it turns into about one and a half to two shots of water because it melts the ice. And so you're diluting it as you do this. And it's really nice and cold. And taking the lid off. There we go. There's your margarita made. What I like about this combination is you really do taste the tequila with this. You get a nice sweetness with the passion fruit, which cuts the, which gives it a, you know, a balance. And there's just enough lime in there to, to give it the grip. It really, again, if, if, you know, there's so many ways of making margaritas and so many choices in making margaritas. It's up to you how you want to make it. You can up your tequila, you can make it less. You can up the passion fruit to make it sweeter. You can up the lime to make it more uh, sour. But that's your passion fruit margarita. The passion fruit is my favorite flavor to make margaritas out of. The raspberry makes a bloody good margarita too. The spice black currant makes an interesting margarita. Um, you don't have to read between the lines there. Uh, some people actually love the black currant. It's just a very interesting margarita because you've got those warm, spicy characters of the black currant, the tequila. Um, it makes it very if you were, if you were to use a more smoky tequila like a um, like a uh, smoky tequila um, mezcal like a mezcal with with the black currant that works make a mezcal margarita because the smokiness works well with the black currant so that works with it okay because I made lots of uh, cocktails with the black currant with mezcal. So again, guys, I'm just showing you the intro to making cocktails with this. There's so, if you can think of any cocktail you, 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 you could make which requires sweetness, and then you, you throw in, say, a passion fruit sweetness, or a raspberry sweetness, or a spice black currant sweetness, that's what you lean this towards. You can make so many cocktails with our products. Anyway, so that is the um, passion fruit margarita. Now I'm going to show you something else with the margarita. You can do the same thing. I'm going to do this quickly. Can I, can I um, get a thumbs up on that one? Or neutral or whatever. Thumbs up if you like, I guess. And there's no rush. Take your time for doing this. Anyone wants to ask a question, please unmute. Very good. Yum. Awesome, Mindy. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, excellent. Okay guys, so now I'm doing the same thing, the same margarita, which I did and I put in the shaker. I've done the same recipe, but this time I've added two, uh, one part of tequila, one part of, uh, of the uh, passion fruit and half a shot or a third of a shot of a lime. But in actual fact, I've added um, about two shots of passion fruit, two shots of tequila, and just under a shot of lime. So, and then I'm going to pile on the ice. 
fine with that. So adding no water. And then, here we go. Got my blender here. And you throw this into the blender. The whole thing. Now I've added a little bit more passion fruit to that. Because what I find is the mix, I don't know why it does it, 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 it asks for a higher level of my passion fruit. So it's a one-to-one -one mix of passion fruit with tequila. When you're making the margarita normally, it's a, it's a one part decadent saint to one and a half parts tequila. That's how I drink it. Again, you can, you can play around with that. So and now I'm just, I've just made that margarita mix. And now what, I, what I find when I'm blending is if you put it on too fast, it doesn't crack all the ice. So you've got to put it on low to medium so it actually cracks the ice. If you put it on full speed, all the ice blocks go around the edge and they don't get cracked up. So you want to have the blender on slow to medium to actually crack up all the ice and make it a consistent, uh, consistent uh, level of ice for, for the uh, for the slushy, the margarita slushy I'm making. Okay, so that's it. Look here, I've made that. That's the that's the slushy there, and you see how it's pouring. It's a thick, like that. And there's your margarita slushy. So that's actually perfect for me. What you can do, what I what I like to do, if you want it more sweet, or if you want more tequila. Because it's got all the ice particles, you just pour a bit more decadent saint and just stir it with a spoon in there, like that. And you can add it, make it sweeter or more tequila-ish, according to your taste, once it's all slushed up. Okay. I'm not asking you to do that right now, because I didn't ask you to do it to bring a blender. Um, but I just wanted to show you how easy that is to do that. And the same thing is with all the, uh, with the sangrias as well, to make it slushy. So guys, I'm going to have a lot of sangria tonight. You can all come over to my place and, and help me drink it. Okay. All right. So now, so look, folks, that is what we've got on my um, on my list to making cocktails tonight. Um, so I, you've you've seen how to make a sangria, a sparkling sangria, a grand sangria, a champagne cocktail, a Moscow mule, and a margarita. Now. I can show you how to make a whiskey sour if you like, but I can just tell you the, the and I'll just, I'll show you quickly. Whiskey sour, I'm gonna make a few quick cocktails for you, just watch me. If you want to, um, if you want to um, make these for yourself, just follow the directions on the cocktail list, which I've handed out for you. Should, are you ready for this? Yes, please. Super refreshing. Okay, awesome. Um, so, so take a rocks glass, whiskey sour. I'm going to make a small one. So, um, I'm going to, I love the raspberries, the whiskey sour. Put in an ounce of one one shot of raspberry. Um, and it's about one and a half shots of whiskey, according to your taste. One and a half shots of whiskey. You can add a dash of lime if you want. You can add some bitters to that. And basically, that is your whiskey sour made. Done. Whiskey sour. Just raspberry. You could. I could have just as well used the passion fruit. I could have just as well used the black currant. Again, with the black currant with whiskey, it moves it towards a Manhattan, a Manhattan type profile. So, we've got some, some bitters here. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of bitters. So, yeah, I, 
better with better with the bitters in my opinion. But that's it, whiskey sour. One and a half to two parts whiskey, one part of decadent sink. That's how you make it. That's the whiskey sour. The uh, gin, gin and tonic. All you do with your gin and tonic, and I'm gonna be real quick with this one. You get your ice like that, your glass. You get your tonic. You ready? Okay, leave the tree. And this is how I do it. I pour, pour in my, my uh, passion fruit, pour in an ounce, of, an ounce of passion fruit, an ounce of gin, pour uh, gin to the top. And I've actually got real lime here and squeeze. Somehow I like using real lime with gin and tonics. And so then squeeze that on top like that and give it a stir. And that's my passion fruit gin and tonic. I went to the liquor store today. I asked him what's selling. He told me cask wine and gin. Cask wine and gin, that's what's selling. Passion fruit gin and tonic, guys. Oh, honestly, that's an incredible flavor. I mean, seriously, if you like a gin and tonic, change it up, throw a bit of a dash of passion fruit into it, a dash of raspberry. Again, the black currant is interesting with the uh, gin. So, um, is there any questions, guys? I mean, I, there's so many cocktails which could be made with these. I think, I hope you're getting the, the nudge with this. The nudge is, honestly, just use these. Don't be shy with using them. Open up the bottles and just try a dash in them. Throw a dash into a beer. So these work as a beer cocktail. You make it like a like that uh, line and kugels, whatever it is. Those those shandies. I can't. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm Australian. Um, and um, and uh, they make a great shandy. And so, but you can't use it with an IPA. You can use it with a wit beer or any you know normal ale type beer, which isn't highly bitter. But someone gave me a, a six pack of, of sour beers the other day hate sour beers, hate them. And so instead of throwing them away or giving them away, I made them into cocktails using my products because these work with sour. These work with ciders, beautifully with ciders. So you've got a sour beer or a cider, these blend beautifully. They don't work so well with bitter, which is an IPA. So, um, so now we're at the end of the tasting. You've got your jug, look at this. Everything's going in there. Everything's going in there. Okay. We're making a college drink. Okay, like that. Okay, guys. We all want to go back to college, don't we? Okay, look at that. Look at what I've got. I'm going to give that a stir. Okay. Now, of course, it's, you know, I've been tasting all of these. So this is my personal cocktail. So if you drink that, you can put that in the fridge now. It will last for about a week or more in the fridge. So now this is my flavor. It's actually good just like it is. Now you can try, you can try adding a bit more of a passion fruit or the raspberry or something and just take, it, take out a glass of it like that. One glass of that, add a bit of passion fruit to the glass. Don't add it to the whole thing. Try a glass by itself with a bit of pasture fruit or a bit of raspberry or a bit of black currant and see how you want to adulterate it to make it better. And once you find the glass which you really like, then add it to the whole thing. Now you could add some whiskey to that, you could add tequila to that, you could add rum to that, and then you've got this, this whole mix of basically sangria, which you can add. You could add wine to this to bring it up in higher and proof with wine. You know, you could make a big batch of something, add wine to it. Okay, so that's what you could do with this whole mix of cocktails. Yeah? So there we go. Happy drinking, happy COVID lifestyle, happy, I don't know, we've got to be happy about something these days. So, yeah. Um, and, um, and I, yeah, I hope this all helps you. 
I want to make those two words. Oh, okay. All right, so guys, so can you quickly talk about how Rocky Mountain Rescue works as a mating mold line as we move into the cooler weather? So look, guys, we've got two products here which make which are great for the hot weather. In the in the summertime, our passion fruit is the is the tops. In the winter time, the, the, the balance tips towards black currant and the spice dark chocolate. So the black currant, the both of these black currant and the spice dark chocolate make blue vine hot mold wine okay so it's not a very common thing in america but it is in europe it's a glue vine it's a wine based um wine based um fruit hot look hot drink so you, you drink a wine it's usually got cinnamon and other spices in it so with the with the black currant to make a glue vine all you do is add put one part of this uh, the black currant in and two parts boiling water done you just boil a jug, two parts boiling water, you make a glue vine out of this. So I'm going to get closer here. So again, that's the black currant uh, there, ultimate mixer, and that's the, the chocolate ultimate mixer. So two parts of the black currant, sorry, one part of the black currant, two parts boiling water, add some wine to that and you make a higher proof uh, glue vine as well. Instead of adding just water, it makes it a richer glue vine. Uh, the chocolate, is a one-to-one -one mix with water. Or again, add wine to that and you make a higher, a higher proof chocolate glue vine. So it's a hot mold wine. Add boiling milk to the chocolate. It's an incredible hot chocolate, alcoholic hot chocolate for the winter time. Add uh, eggnog to this, the chocolate, and you make a great eggnog liqueur with the chocolate for the, for the, for the winter time for Christmas. So the black currant really is the flavor, which is the winter. Everyone says, oh, that's winter. And they try it. So you can try it as a winter sangria, as a winter um, champagne cocktail, as a uh, Manhattan, or really this is one which blows people away as a glue, as a mold, as a glue vine, hot mold wine. That's the that's the uh, the black currant. Okay. So again, guys, remember all of these. Once they're open, they stay fresh for six months without refrigeration. Okay. Right, so there we go. Is there, are there any questions from anybody? Thank you, James. Thank you, Jamie. Yeah, yeah, no, makes you happy. But share, share the good news. Guys, what we're doing, just to let you know, on our website, we also make hand sanitizer. We had to pivot when we, COVID happened. So we also make hand sanitizer. And so this is not something to drink. It is, um, so this is something we made, we, we sell it by the gallon. And, um, and so you will see on our website, we're gonna have lots of specials coming up. We're gonna, we're gonna be selling our hand sanitizer for $10 a gallon. $10 a gallon on our website when people buy our sample packs. Our sample packs are these guys here. It looks like a nondescript box, but they have, each sample pack has these mini bottles in them. Little mini bottles. There, there's the uh, passion fruit and there's the raspberry. And then it's got the black currant and the chocolate as well. So you can buy the sample packs. Um, there's four, four little bottles in them and it's, 20, it's the same price as a bottle. So you can sample all four flavors for, for $22 or you can buy them as a gift pack to give to somebody. Um, now that is only available online, not available at Davidson's. The other products, all our ultimate mixes are available at Davidson's. We also have, not on, only available online or at markets, is our mud, decadent mud. It's a 8% it's a alcohol chocolate dipping sauce, okay? You can dip strawberries, fruit, cheeses, um, so many, it's so useful. You can pour it on your vanilla ice cream uh, over pancakes, waffles, you can use it for frosting, frost your cupcakes and so forth with it. Okay, it's an 8% eight, eight alcohol dark chocolate dipping sauce. So we sell this for a nine ounce bottle, nine ounce jar for $15 at markets or online. Okay, so it's, it's totally unique. Again, nobody's doing uh, an, an alcoholic chocolate sauce like this. We haven't seen anything like it on the marketplace. So 8% alcohol chocolate. Okay, so that's that. Eat it by the spoonful. 
It's really delicious. We've got mint and, and plain. Mint, dark chocolate, and it's made with red wine, dark chocolate, decaf coffee, berries and spices. So, okay. I think we're done, almost. Rebecca, have you got any questions? You have the mud. Rebecca, do you have the mud? Rebecca doesn't have the mud. We haven't, we haven't got the mud um, at Davidson's. You'd have to go to our website because we, it's, we're, we're only just releasing it. I'd love to release it to, to, to liquor stores, but it's been, we've only just started doing it in a small way to at markets and events. So it's really like an experimental release. And so it hasn't been something we've released in a big way to a wider market, like to a liquor store. Um, so Rebecca, apologies for that. Um, so you'd have to go online to find that at decadentsaint.com. But I think Decadent Saint carries out, wow, that's a great price, $17.99 a bottle. That's really about the best price you'll find in the front range, $17.99 a bottle for all of our Decadent Saints. So, um, and if you want to buy our sanitizer again, it's online. So, um, okay. I don't think, has anybody got any questions? Surely there must be one question. Okay, Rebecca, what shall we do? Are we ready to wrap this up? Yeah, I'm ready to wrap this up. Again, yes, the great deal at uh, Davidson's for all of these great St. Decadent uh, liqueurs. Um, there's also that 10% off coupon, so don't forget that. Sorry, my cat decided to join in. Um, yeah. So be sure to stop at Davidson's, bring your coupon this weekend, and be sure to come back in two weeks. We'll be here with on August 20th with Col Terrace uh, Winery, so we can try some wines. If anyone else has any questions, feel free to unmute yourself, ask. But thank you all for joining us. Um, we'll see you in two weeks. Look, everyone knows Davidson's have always been a great supporter of us. I'd really love you to support them and buy our products from Davidson's. Um, we are a very small company, and that's why many of these products are unavailable at most stores. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Laurie. Thank you, Mindy. Thank you, Jamie. Okay. All right, awesome, guys. Thank you.